All right, guys, so today we're gonna do the rough idle causes on the M5. Now, there's a lot to this one, <laughs> I have to, have to say. Um, so we're gonna go over all of it. Let's get the hood open and we'll start. Okay, so like I said, there's a lot. There's a lot to this one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so as you know, this is the V10. This basically has two of everything. So we'll start kind of from the front, work our way back and just go all over the place. So let's say you start up, you have a misfire. Now here's where it gets really tricky. Before you even start diagnosing anything, almost all these cars on a cold start have a misfire. Let me show you before we even start this, what I'm talking about. This thing's been sitting since yesterday. It is going to crack on pop on cold start. So let's just see. So you can see it's rough, just the way it is. So, but it warms up. Let's say you got a misfire, but it's not throwing a code yet. That's also a common flaw in these. To start with, you check your spark plugs, your coil packs, and all that. Now these use a different kind of coil pack. They use a white coil pack. You can see down there, that is. And overall, they're not too bad to get to. On the driver's side, they get kind of funky with the Coolant reservoir in the way. Uh, but you gotta make sure they are the white coil packs in there. And you gotta make sure they're seated all the way. You gotta make sure the plug-in is plugged in all the way. So whenever you plug the coil pack in, you see this is a white top. And they are slightly longer than the black ones. You tried the black ones in this, people said they would work. The standard coil packs, they do not work. They don't work consistently. So where you plug the, the triangle plug in, you gotta make sure it's all the way back in before you flip the latch. If not, just like on any BMW, it will misfire on that cylinder, no doubt. So let's move on here. The spark plugs is the next thing. It kind of goes hand in hand if you have a bad coil pack. It could also cause the spark plug to go bad or a bad spark plug has been changed in a long time could cause the coil pack to go bad. So you have that and you have 10 of them. So it's a big money operation. They're about $70 to $85 for one coil pack. So you're looking almost $1,000 for coil packs. Sweet, huh? Um, moving up to the spark system, under this cover right here, there is something called a ionic sensor. And the ionic sensor is basically a spark control module, essentially, um, that controls all the spark plug or all the coil pack wires plug into that sensor, right? That could go bad and cause a misfire that you can't fix by replacing the coil packs. Okay, you still with me? All right, there is that. That isn't always throw a check engine light either. It has to get bad enough to throw that. There's one of those modules on each side, right? They are interchangeable, you can't swap it back and forth. So, the next thing I would check would be all your vacuum stuff. So, and these don't really have too much of a vacuum leak problem. These boots here, check the PCV lines back there, make sure all that's good. Check the PCV valves itself. If there's a problem, those are malfunctioning. That can cause a vacuum leak, it can cause a weird idle, and so forth. You got one on each side, so do it all. Also, a failing mass airflow sensor can also cause that. It also cause hard start, problematic starting issues, random running, random everything, right? Also, when you take this off, this plenum and this plenum come off separately, and this has 10 throttle bodies. So you have a rubber boot, as you guys see in the previous videos, one of my rubber boots was kind of smushed and it was leaking air on number 10 cylinder. And on these, the cylinders are all backwards. Number 10 is at the back over here, right? And number one is at the passenger front. Opposite of most engines, that's just the way it is. So if you take all that off, you can't see any problems with that. Once you have that off, check all the vacuum lines on the back, 
all the PCB stuff that plugs in the front of the plenum. Check all that. Okay. So if you still have misfire, you've gone through all that, you eliminated all that stuff, you need to do a compression check. Because some guys are having problems with burnt valves. And I think a lot of that's to do if they have a vacuum leak that's not kept up with, you get a little bit of a burnt valve, right? So compression check is always good. That's kind of like the last thing to do with it, though. Um, there's many, many other things you still have to go over uh, before you get to that point. And the biggest thing is, on these E60s, they have a problem, as this car had when we got it, of getting water in the ECU box. Now, sometimes the car won't start when you get water in the ECU box and it floods the ECU, but sometimes it will. And sometimes certain things don't work. Sometimes it runs really bad. And so you need to check that also. The best defense against any of that when you first buy one of these cars, jack it up, take the passenger front tire off, you guys see me do it several times on the channel. You go pop the inner fender well loose. You reach up underneath to the bottom of the ECU box. And you pull out the drain, the whole rubber drain, toss it in the trash. If you do that, you never have a problem. You can even do it on the brake servo side. Even though that's not as common on these cars without the flood and there's no computer over there, it's still a possibility. And rainwater basically runs down the windshield in behind there and it's supposed to drain through and it can't drain through and it backs up and floods the ECU. Now, <laughs> there's something else. The vandal system. The vandal system is a timing advance system. It runs off oil pressure. Here's the upper uh, passenger vandal line, upper driver vandal line. That goes straight down to the engine, and it has a braided stainless steel line. Uh, I think I threw it away, my old one. That goes all the way down in the oil pan through the engine and hooks to the vandal's pump. Now, over time, that gets rotten. The, it's braided stainless steel, but it's a rubber core on that line. And there's about eight inches of, of the flex on it. And that'll leak. Now, if that leaks, what's going to happen, you're going to get some real nasty cold starts. You're going to get some real nasty idling. You're going to get some random misfire or even Vanos codes or Vanos oil pressure codes. Basically, these cars every 60K or so need to have the rod bearings done and that Vanos line replaced and some other related bits to it. Okay, the next thing. When well, I got this car, we had a throttle actuator problem. The throttle actuator sit under the intake plenums, under the wiring harness. You guys have seen the videos probably in the past. You're replacing those. And what happens is the little teeth on them. Hold on. This is a new one, but the little plastic teeth get wore out on them, right? There's this gear and a connecting gear. And we first got this car right where the, the throttle actuator gear sits at idle, where it moves up and down with the little motor to control the throttle bodies, it wore the teeth out and it got play in it. So the computer is always searching for idle, running up and down, up and down, up and down. And that'll cause misfire, that'll cause a random idle that'll cause all kinds of issues. And eventually, if you don't fix that and it gets bad enough, it'll run the circuit board in the actuator. So, as you've seen before, you could buy that the good gears for like a hundred and I don't remember, 130, 140 bucks for a good set. So you can fix that problem for that kind of money if you could put it on yourself. Now, the next thing you need to check, and I need to replace these, is the air filters. Mine are kind of ratty. Those are the ones that came with the car. They're the paper filters. A lot of guys say on the forums, if the air filters get too dirty on this engine, it could cause erratic aisle and misfires. So we will be doing that very shortly, uh, but that's easy enough to check. Pop the latches on the boxes, flip it up, pull the air filter out and look at it. If it's dirty, replace it. We're gonna go ahead and do the two engine air filters and the cabin filters all in one run. All that up very soon. Now, like I said before, some of these problems are really common. Some of them are not very common. But if you're chasing an issue, first of all, make sure it's just not the cold idle, cold start, rough idle. You might be chasing something and there's no problem, and that's going to drive you insane. Um, they are very expensive cars to fix, but the end of the story here is, with the S85, if people's done the maintenance all along through its life, when you buy one, you won't have a lot of stuff to replace. This car, like many, many, many others, 
Should have had throttle actuators done a long time ago. Should have had the rod bearings done a long time ago. Should have had this, should have had that. It should have never gotten to this state. The problem is people buy these cars, they could barely afford to buy the car and they sure as hell can't afford to pay a shop to fix it, right? So then you're faced with, you can't afford to fix it, but you own it. So you just run it till it just doesn't move. And that's where this car was at. So it's been very reliable since I've had it. Um, well, once you got the initial nonsense knocked out of it, uh, we have had a coil pack go bad. That's the only thing actually was went wrong with it. Uh, and I bought, had to buy one from AutoZone because I had to get the exhaust done the next day and I didn't have time to order it. So I put the coil pack model zone in there. It was a Chinese coil pack and we get a random misfire code on number two cylinder where the coil pack's at. So we got to replace that again. And that's what's unfortunate. So I paid $65 for that coil pack. I could have almost bought a legit one for the same price, but when you need something right now, you got to pay a bunch of money for it. It may not be what you want. The best way to do it is to order stuff ahead of time. This, my friends, is not, this is not a daily driver car. I mean, I could daily drive it now. Everything's been fixed on it. But if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on it, uh, you better know what you're doing with the old laptop. And you better know what you're doing on how to fix stuff to maintain this car. So overall, I'm very happy with it. Uh, there was a lot of initial costs, but now it's good. It's a really fun car. It drives well. I think the only thing that doesn't work is the remote, the key remote. And we're about to sort that very quickly. Not a lot of M5s driving around that are totally sorted maintenance wise. And this one is, so I'm happy to have it and hopefully it lasts for many years to come. That's going to be it guys for the misfire video for the S85 V10 engine. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.